I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the regimes of engine operation and then we shall discuss about the operation of a simple float type carburetor. In the last class we have discussed about the stoichiometric air fuel ratio as such by discussing the need of an important element in the context of the operation of SI engine that is the carburetor, we could establish the chemically correct or stoichiometric air fuel ratio for a fuel having chemical formula C8 H 18. Following similar procedure, it is also possible to obtain the stoichiometric fuel air or air fuel ratio and lastly we discussed that it is not necessary that engine will always get stoichiometric air fuel ratio during its operation. Instead, for any particular type of fuel, carburetor would be able to provide fuel air ratio or air fuel ratio for a range and that is known as combustible range. So, if we recall that for the fuel which we had taken C 8 H 18, for that fuel we could write that stoichiometric air fuel ratio say stoichiometric air fuel ratio is here that is 15.12. Still, we had discussed that the range within which engine should get air fuel ratio from the carburetor for this particular fuel is 8 to 20 and that is the combustible range. So, this range is range. We had also discussed that if the fuel air ratio, so fuel air stoichiometric equal to fifteen point one two. Uh, or air fuel ratio. So, if it is air fuel ratio then, so let us write it, it was air fuel ratio right and if the air fuel ratio being supplied by the carburetor is above 20, then we can see that if the range I mean if the operating point or the fuel air fuel ratio supplied by the carburetor is in this particular regime, then this regime we can understand that the air present in that charge or mixture is higher than the stoichiometric air fuel ratio and this is more air 
So, basically you can understand that if this is the if this is the regime of operation then the air present in that mixture is more. So, that though fuel will act chemically correct I cannot say that fuel will act chemically correct rather fuel will act chemically correct, but if the fuel is acting with the air in a following chemically correct ratio that would be that would be stoichiometric air fuel ratio, but when the amount of air present in the charge is even higher than the stoichiometric ratio, but if that is definitely if it is 17 then also higher, but if it is above 20 that is beyond the combustible, combustible range then the heat that will be produced is dissipated by the air present in excess and the result is combustion will not sustain. So, that means, in this regime when the amount of air present in the mixture is more than its stoichiometric ratio rather much much higher than the stoichiometric ratio it is beyond 20 then it is known as lean mixture. And if the mixture is lean as I told fuel will act chemically, but the amount of heat that will be produced gets dissipated by the air present in excess in the charge and the result is combustion will not sustain. What about if the ratio is less than 8? So, you can understand if we now focus on this particular regime that is shown by this hatched portion. In this regime if we take out any particular point and so this is, so this axis is fuel air ratio right. It is if it is less than 8, if it is less than 8 then it is far away from the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. What does it physically indicate? It indicates that the amount of air present in the mixture is less than the stoichiometric air fuel ratio even if it is 8 it is also less, but if it is less than 8 that is you know below the combustible range then the amount of air present in that charge or mixture is much much less than the stoichiometric uh, uh, requirement. And what will happen you know fuel will take part in the combustion amount of heat that will be produced will be absorbed by the excess amount of fuel. What it what does it physically signify? In this particular regime the amount of air is less rather fuel is more. So, this particular regime is known as rich mixture. Okay. So, this is the rich mixture and you know that here also combustion will be there because combustion will be initiated by the spark plug, but the amount of heat that will be produced will be absorbed by the fuel which is present in the mixture in excess and the flame will not be flame will not sustain. So, whether if it is above 20 or below 8 in both these regimes combustion will not sustain. So, the condition is it is very unlikely that carburetor would supply always stoichiometric air fuel ratio, but the carburetor should be designed in such a way that it would be able to provide air fuel ratio within this range and that is the combustible range. So, since we have understood that it is not possible to supply stoichiometric air fuel ratio for this particular fuel I, we are you know talking about definitely this range will be different if we consider different uh, fuels. So, you know that uh, if it is not 15.12 then if it is 17 or if it is 10 
we really do not know that means, 15.12 is the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Sometimes, engine may require higher than 15.12, but less than 20. Sometimes, engine may require air fuel ratio which is less than 15.12, but higher than 8. So, depending on the requirement of fuel air ratio, depending on the need of the fuel air ratio based on the power output or load of the engine, the engine operation can be you know divided into three different regimes. What are those three different regimes? So, basically you can write. So, try to understand neither we are trying to go to the lean mixture regime nor we are trying to arrive at the rich mixture regime. Instead, we are trying to be in this combustible range, even within the combustible range, depending on the requirement of air fuel mixture, which is solely based on the power output or load of the engine, we can divide the engine operation in three distinct regimes. So, here I am writing engine operations. These three regimes are known as idling, cruising regime, number three is power regime. So, these are three regimes of engine operation solely based on the amount of fuel air mixture being supplied by the carburetor to the engine cylinder and, but whatever the amount would be either for idling or for cruising or for power that requirement must lie within this combustible range. And this three regimes are based on the requirement of air fuel or fuel air ratio. Okay. So, now let us briefly discuss about what do we, what is idling zone what is cruising zone and what is power zone. Briefly, let us uh, discuss. So, if we try to draw the schematic that it would be you know uh, clear to you all. So, if we try to draw the schematic. right? So, what, what I had written? this is based on the requirement of air fuel mixture or fuel air ratio, mixture of fuel air and air fuel ratio and this essentially, this particular ratio essentially varies with a change in engine load. So, if we look at essentially we could classify these three different regimes depending on the load or power of the engine. So, if we try to now, draw. So, this is air fuel ratio or say fuel air ratio, air fuel or fuel air that is and this is engine load, right. If we use any particular fuel say C 8 H 18, and if we mark this is the, so this is air fuel stoichiometric. So, this is air fuel stoichiometric, if this is the C 8 H 18, it would be 15.12 or if it is fuel air mixture, it would be 1 upon 15.12. Now, quite 
interesting that we shall discuss after drawing this. If the load say this is 0, if we this is 0, say this is Five percent. Say this is twenty percent of the uh, I shall discuss it now. What it, what does it mean? Say this is then if it is say 80 percent and finally, say this is 100 percent. So, this is what I wrote earlier is load. So, this is load or I am writing now percentage opening of throttle valve. Now, let us draw the schematic of the cylinder. This is exhaust valve, this is intake valve. So, this is spark plug and BDC, TDC and piston is coming up and down like this. If we mark the throttle valve over here, say so this is the throttle valve. So, this is throttle valve. What do we do? We tune the throttle valve opening area to supply air fuel mixture into the cylinder definitely during intake stroke, but now the requirement of fuel air mixture we are trying to you know map with a change in load and essentially what do you mean because you know that if we need higher load from the engine if rather if the if we if we demand higher load from the engine then this opening area should be more. So, that is why I have written 100 percent. So, if this opening area increases it is equivalent to the percentage opening of the throttle valve right. So, if we need more power more load from the engine we need to open throttle valve fully. So, that is what it is. So, that is why I had written load or percentage opening of the throttle valve. So, let me uh, this is load ok. So, see question is intuition says that when load is less theoretically the fuel air ratio or air fuel mixture to be supplied by the carburetor to the engine should be less, but it is not the case. Let us plot it then we shall discuss. So, if we plot this is the curve then this is say this is from A, this is B up to this is C and say this is the this is curve C. Okay. 
Okay. So, this is curve C, this is D, right. What we can see from this particular curve is that when load is less 5 percent to 25, 20 percent, that means what does it indicate? It indicates that engine is almost in the idling condition, no load is extracted from the engine and in that condition we can see that the requirement of fuel air mixture that is needed for the engine operation is high. In, in fact, if we consider three different regimes, it is the requirement is even higher than the last one. We shall discuss. So, this particular regime is known as idling regime. Why it is idling? You have seen that may be engine has engine is started, but no power is extracted from the engine, just someone has started the engine, but engine is not in the uh, running condition or there is no there is no power developed by the engine there is uh, to be precise there is no load extract, extracted by the engine. In that case you know that I can't say that the load is not extracted by the engine because in this engine is in engine in the running condition. So, if it is 5 to 20 percent that means it is almost in the idling condition no load is extracted from the engine in that case we can see that the requirement of fuel air mixture is even higher than two other regimes and this regimes in known as idling regimes. So, if we write over here this is the idling regime. So, this is known as idling Reason. Okay. We shall discuss the you know reason behind such a high requirement of air fuel mixture. You can see this is the stoichiometric air fuel ratio, but the requirement is even higher than the stoichiometric air fuel ratio for during the idling zone. Next is B two C, and in this reason we can see that engine is almost getting stoichiometric air fuel ratio from the carburetor and this is from 20 percent to 80 percent. So, that means, if someone has started the engine in the during the idling zone the requirement is very high the moment at which load is extracted from the engine, engine you know is giving us some load then our logical set logic it, it, it is quite logical that you know uh, requirements should be more, but what we can see from this you know diagram is that requirement is getting reduced and almost it is running you know at the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. So, this is basically the economy setting of the engine right. So, most of the time engine runs in this regime wherein the air fuel mixture or fuel air mixture to be supplied by the carburetor to the engine is this stoichiometric air fuel ratio and this is the you know maximum fuel economy you know regime. So, this is known as cruising zone. So, this is the cruising region. Okay. Next is, so that means, in the cruising region we need to open the throttle valve. So, when engine is in the idyllic, idling condition throttle valve is almost closed, it is almost closed, but not fully closed and we need to supply fuel air mixture to the engine cylinder that time the mixture should be rich with fuel not you know air. So, 
the fuel year that is what I had written over here if we know if we, if we if we plot this is fuel year ratio or should I write over here is the air fuel. So, this is air fuel stoichiometric or fuel air stoichiometric. Okay. So, this is uh, the cruising regime and next one is so basically throttle valve is throttle valve is almost closed partially open and in that regime that is the idling regime we need higher fuel air mixture. When you are trying to have a change from the regime from the idling to the cruising regime we can see that we are trying to bring maximum fuel economy by supplying stoichiometric fuel air ratio to the engine and this is the regime wherein the fuel economy is attained and engine runs most of the time in this regime. Then you can see that the throttle opening area should be increased. So, that means we are trying to extract load from this 5 percent slowly and when the load is varying from 20 percent to 80 percent that is the throttle opening area should be 20 percent to 80 percent then I mean engine is giving us maximum load at the best fuel economy and that is what we can see from this regime is that stoichiometric air fuel ratio is being supplied by the carburetor. Now, when we need to open this throttle valve from 80 percent to 100 percent that means, we are extracting more or we are we are expecting more load more power from the engine and then it is quite obvious it is quite logical even that if we need to shift the regime from cruising to the power that means, we are trying to extract more power from the engine if it is the case then definitely we need to supply more fuel air mixture because we are trying to get more power more load. So, throttle opening area should be more and as a result you know not only as a result because of this you know large throttle opening area should be more because we need to supply maximum or higher mass flow rate of fuel air mixture and the requirement of fuel that would be supplied through that mixture to the engine also should increase and that is why you can see that it is also increases. I mean this you know fuel air mixture uh, the, the required fuel air mixture also increases, but try to notice that the requirement during even power regime is not equal to that which is needed during the idling regime. So, this regime is the power regime. Why it is power? Because we are trying to obtain maximum power from the engine and if it is the case the required fuel air ratio should also be higher than the cruising regime. What we can understand from this discussion is that cruising regime is the regime in which we are getting maximum power with a best economy in fuel. So, this is the most important regime of the operation of engine and the requirement is this stoichiometric air fuel ratio. So, this is fine. Now, let us briefly discuss that we can understand that uh, when you know if it is so long as the required ratio is this stoichiometric ratio then there is no question because we are supplying stoichiometric air fuel ratio chemically correct air fuel, fuel ratio we are trying to attain best fuel economy at times getting maximum power, but the requirement is maximum during idling regime and also in the power regime. The higher requirement in the power regime is justified quite logical even because we are trying to get more, more power and you can see that the throttle opening area is increasing, but why the requirement is so high during the idling regime. Now, let us look into that particular aspect and for that we need to draw the schematic once again. So, if we draw the schematic,
So, this is carburetor and this is intake manifold, intake valve, this is exhaust valve. This is top dead center. This is bottom dead center. So, this is this is bottom dead center, this is exhaust manifold. And this is intake manifold, this is spark plug, And this is carburetor, this is fuel supply, this is air supply, right. So, let us now briefly recall the uh, strokes, rather several strokes. Intake stroke, so if it is intake stroke. So, when engine is in operation, intake stroke will follow the exhaust stroke, right. Immediately after exhaust stroke, intake stroke will occur. And say if we consider such an intake stroke, which is maybe after a few cycles of operation of the engine. Then, what is happening you know that this space is filled with combustion gases. So, this is so this is combustion gases. So, when intake start will occur or intake start intake stroke will start this clearance volume that is the volume above I mean above TDC and the uh, the in between TDC and the you know, piston uh, cylinder head. So, the uh, clearance volume is the volume which is the volume between TDC and the cylinder head. So, the space occupied this space is occupied by the combustion gases or you know or combustion products. So, from the previous cycle and now when intake stroke starts that means as I told you maybe we are considering this is the intake stroke after a few cycles of operation of the engine. And then what is happening intake stroke will start exhaust stroke is you know uh, completed this space is filled with combustion gases and say this pressure and this pressure is something 15 psi. This is the atmospheric pressure because now, uh, so this is 14.7 psi. So, pressure inside the cylinder will be even still higher than the atmospheric pressure, exhaust valve will be closed at the end of the exhaust stroke. So, pressure still is higher. Now, if we look at the idling regime, opening area is 5 percent to 20 percent. That means, engine is almost I mean engine is in the idling condition, throttle valve is almost closed, but it is not fully closed. What will happen you know that if we you know this is the throttle valve. So, throttle valve is almost you know this is the throttle valve.
it is almost closed. If we open it, because we know we need to open 5 percent to 20 percent, because it is not needed to supply even stoichiometric air fuel ratio, because no load is extracted from the engine. So, what will happen you know this is the 15 psi intake valve was closed at the end of the exhaust stroke. We are now going to have another intake stroke, exhaust will remain closed, intake will open and throttle valve is partially open. So, if that is the case, the upstream pressure is the atmospheric pressure. So, here you know the pressure here. So, this is fully almost fully closed upstream pressure is the atmospheric pressure, but this pressure for the downstream pressure is very less. So, here pressure is say 4 psi right. So, throttle valve is closed almost closed. If we open the intake valve you can see that this is 15 psi whereas, pressure for the downstream of the intake uh, throttle valve is 4 psi. It is because of this pressure difference the moment when intake valve opens and cylinder is coming down from TDC to BDC for the new intake stroke this 15 this combustion gases will rush towards the throttle valve because throttle valve is not fully open it is partially open and pressure downstream of the throttle valve is less upstream is atmospheric pressure. So, what will happen you know that this combustion gases which is having relatively high pressure accounting for that pressure difference combustion gases will run towards the intake manifold as a result of which we are supposed to get fresh charge by partially opening the throttle valve, but that fresh charge will get resistance by these combustion gases. Not only that we need fresh charge for the for further combustion instead what we can see that the fresh charge will get diluted by the combustion gases which is there from the previous cycle. This fresh charge dilution will result in you know uh, combustion issue that is uh, I can say that combustion will not sustain. So, what will happen when the engine is in idyllic condition issue is throttle valve is almost close it is because of this pressure difference that you have understood I guess what will happen the fresh charge which is going to come to the engine cylinder will get diluted by the combustion gases those are there in this engine cylinder. So, the fresh charge dilution with the combustion gases from the previous cycle will result in inefficient almost incomplete combustion. So, to make sure that engine, but still we need to run in, we need we have started we has we need to start the engine, engine is in the running condition. So, we need to have combustion. So, to ensure that the throttle valve which partially open the fresh charge is coming despite the possibility of having fresh charge dilution by the combustion gases to ensure the combustion the amount of fuel that should be supplied by the carburetor to the engine should be higher. And it is because of this reason the requirement of fuel air mixture during idling regime is high. So, this is uh, uh, the reason. Next why we need to get we need to supply higher fuel air mixture for the power reason this is quite obvious. So, we can write that fresh charge dilution by the combustion gas present inside the cylinder from the previous cycle is responsible for 
the higher fuel air ratio during idling regime. Okay. So, this is the consequence this is question. Okay. So, we have tried to address this question. Now, idling regime uh, idling uh, regime. So, this should be idling Regime. Okay. So uh, next, we said we shall discuss why the requirement is even higher during the power regime. So this is quite obvious as I discussed. It is even logical to set the requirement from the economy setting to the higher setting during power regime because we need high power or high load from the engine. So, you can see that if we need high power or if we need to get high power or high load from the engine. So, percentage opening of the throttle valve is almost full and that means, the mass flow rate of fresh charge consequently the mass flow rate of com you know combustion products will be higher. So, when the higher mass flow rate of the combustion gases are trying to go out through the exhaust manifold into the surroundings. Then what will happen you know that try to understand in this particular regime of operation we are trying to extract more load or more power. So, we need to supply more amount of failure mixture, what will happen you know that more power that means, the rise in temperature and pressure inside the cylinder will also will be more. The rise in temperature and pressure inside the cylinder during power stroke also will be more and that high temperature combustion gases when leaving from the engine cylinder to the surroundings through the exhaust manifold high risk areas are exhaust manifold and exhaust valve. So, this exhaust manifold and exhaust valve will be prone to high temperature and that high temperature may lead to the failure of these two components. Intake manifold is in a safe position while the exhaust manifold and exhaust valve through which always high temperature combustion gases are in contact and those are continuously passing through those areas as a result these two areas are prone to mechanical damage and that tendency will be more during power stroke because the rise in temperature and pressure also will be more. So, engine will not be able to utilize the temperature that we are getting even during power stroke. You have studied in thermodynamics you know that may be in the power stroke we are trying to produce more temperature more pressure by, bar, by burning more amount of air fuel mixture, but issue is it is not possible to utilize the temperature that will be produced. So, if the you know developed temperature is also high the loss of temperature also will be very high. So, what will happen you know that that high temperature combustion gases when living through this uh, manifold temperature will increase and that temperature will, will try to uh, you know destroy these parts. So, to reduce the possibility of having maximum rise of temperature in the exhaust manifold and in the 
uh, and of the exhaust valve, it is it is needed to increase the amount of fuel with the mixture that is supplied. Now, question is if we su supply more amount of liquid fuel to the mixture, what will happen you know that the liquid fuel will try to absorb the amount of you know some amount of temperature from the you know temperature that is being produced. So, that reduction will help to save these two you know uh, high risk parts of the engine, so that we can increase their life. So, the requirement of higher fuel air mixture during power stroke is quite obvious from the fact that we are trying to increase power or you know load that will be produced by the engine. So, if we are trying to get more power we need to supply more amount of air fuel mixture and that is what we can see that the percentage opening of the throttle valve will be more. But in this regime if we need to supply more amount of air fuel mixture then issue is the rise in temperature also should be uh, severe and that temperature rise will you know create several mechanical problems issues of the exhaust manifold and exhaust valve. So, to reduce the temperature of from the combustion gases to reduce the temperature during the combustion uh, process we need to supply more amount of liquid fuel with the charge and that excess liquid excess fuel will try to absorb some amount of temperature which is produced during combustion and it will it will save this locations from their mechanical failure. So, this is why the requirement of failure mixture during power stroke is also high that we can see from this plot. So, now if we try to summarize today we have tried to discuss about the engine you know operation from the perspective of the requirement of fuel air mixture and starting from the stoichiometric air fuel ratio we had seen that it is very unlikely that uh, it is engine always needs stoichiometric air fuel ratio and that we had seen today that during idling and also in the power regime we need to deviate the operation from the cruising regime operation that is the ratio of air fuel mixture or fuel air mixture to be supplied to the engine is definitely not the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. But the amount of fuel air mixture or air fuel mixture to be supplied even during idling condition and the power regime should be within the combustible range. If the ratio is not within the combustible range then either it would be too lean to sustain the flame or it be it would be too rich to sustain the combustion. And we had seen that the requirement of fuel air mixture during idling and the power regimes is very high and we have also explained the reason behind such a higher requirement of fuel air mixture during these two regimes. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.